Hey, you guys, it's your girl T, and I want to go ahead and shout out Serenity is Love on YouTube. She's one of the first ones to ask me to talk about this viral story. It's about one of the coaches from the hit show Bring It On on Lifetime. Lord, I ask that you watch over these girls as they perform. Give them the biggest smiles, the highest kicks, the baddest attitudes that a dancer should have. Amen. Now, what's so ironic is that the other day I had did my recap for Love & Hip Hop Hollywood and a lot of folks were asking me, you know, do I watch different types of shows? You know, do you watch Bring It On? Do you watch The Rap Game? Do you watch Little Women LA, Little Women Atlanta? I watch all of those shows. I love all of those shows. I'm a big reality TV show junkie, honey. That is my vice. And I love Bring It On. It's such a positive show. Oh, I love Miss Diane. I love her girls. I am DD4L, okay? Dancing Dolls for Life. Yes, okay? So I love the girls. They're really, really good girls. You know what I'm saying? The show's well put together. And the coach that's under investigation right now is the coach from the infamous Dancer Rats. When I created my stance, I took bits and pieces from her to show her how to be clean. Hit her in her mouth. One, two. So when you see it from somebody else, you be like, oh, that's how we really supposed to look. Because when it comes to the dancing dolls, they have a tendency of getting sloppy. We've seen them battle the dancing dolls time and time again. We've all fallen in love with John Connor. I love his attitude on the show. He seems really, really positive, but now a lot of shady shit is coming out about him. But what's going down is that basically they're saying that John Connor is a 27 year old man. He's being charged with sexual exploitation of a minor. He's also being criminally charged with exposing that same minor to HIV. They're saying that he had sex with a 16 year old boy last year and Connor did not disclose his HIV positive status. The boy said that the two of them met on several occasions and had unprotected sex in the suspect's car. There were nude images also sent via text message. And the police are saying that Connor was diagnosed with HIV back in 2012. He was arrested this Friday. This whole situation is crazy. He's being held on $100,000 bail. I want you guys to go ahead and check out this news clip and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. John Connor is being held tonight. Jeremy. Yeah, Marius and Chloe, I learned recently that the victim in this case recently performed with the infamous Dan Surrettes in last Saturday's Southern Heritage Classic Parade. Today, the suspect, the leader of the infamous dance group, is locked up here in 201. John Connor is accused of having sex with a 16-year-old male dance student several times in 2015. Police tells me Connor did not tell the victim that he was HIV positive. John Connor's infamous dancerettes have been featured on the popular dance show Bring It several times. According to a police affidavit, the student and Connor met on social media before the victim would begin dancing in Connor's group. We spoke with Connor's mother, who tells us these accusations, well, they're questionable. If it's so much of a problem, why you wait? Or why he waits? You know, to now, because you, you, he told you you couldn't be the leader of the group. I taped that interview with Connor's mother just before she was headed down here to 201 to see her son. Now, in 30 minutes, I'll explain why she thinks this is a debacle just to take away the group from her son. I'll have that story for you in the next 30 minutes. I'm reporting live tonight from 201. Jeremy Pierre, Fox 13 News. All right, so you guys just watched that news clip. So shortly after this story went viral, he was able to be bailed out. Um, you see the mother defending him and saying that the that the teen is just hating. The teen is mad because he didn't get to be a captain, and that's why he's going to the police. So J. John is what he goes by on Facebook. This is what he posted onto his Facebook page last night. So J. John says, for those who know me, know my truth. For those who don't know me, are subject to believe what they hear or read. Well, I'm asking those that know me to make those who don't aware of the type of person I am and the character I have. Yes, I have been accused of something that is so not true. Yes, I turned myself in as soon as I heard I was being looked for. Notice I said I turned myself in. I have nothing to run from or hold my head down for. I'm a child of God first. I'm human second. 
but at all times I love me and my freedom too much to have ever done what I'm being accused of. Does it hurt? Yes, it does touch me, of course, but will it get me down? No way. This is just another test I have to go through and another one that will pass. I just ask that when you see the photos, the comments from fake pages, the news, or even your next door neighbor when they say something about me, ask yourself, do I know him and them me? And if you don't, ask someone that does. And remember, just because people know my face from TV don't mean they know me. So that's what he said. You know, it sounds very convincing. And, you know, that's good that he turned himself in. But a few things bother me with this story because y'all know a bitch keep receipts, okay? Now, what kind of bothers me with this story is that the police are saying that they pulled his medical records and they're saying that this man had been diagnosed with HIV since 2012. Well, back on August 12th, which was just a few weeks ago, he had took into his Facebook page. And at that point in time, John Connor, he basically posted on Facebook that he was, that he was very depressed. He's being exploited about something that happened over a year ago and that he had attempted suicide three days before he posted this on Facebook saying that he had attempted to kill himself by taking two bottles of pills. Um, they end up putting him like in a, they end up taking him to the hospital and sending him to a menstrual institution and putting him on suicide watch. Um, he's also saying that he's no longer hide, he's no longer in hiding and he's not afraid to be who he is. And what kind of caught me with this long post is he's saying, I just found out I suffer from depression of not being able to cope with the fact that I was given HIV. He's saying that he just found out that he suffers from depression of not being able to cope with the fact that he was given HIV. And then he says, yes, I said I am HIV positive, but I thank God for protecting me and keeping me undetectable. This is a hard pill to swallow, but at the end of the day, it's something I have to deal with. So to me, you know, looking back on that post from August 12th to where he's at right now, September 18th, you know, I feel like he had put that out there because he knew that there might have been enough evidence to criminally charge him. That's why he's making statements like, I just found out I suffer from depression because somebody gave me HIV and I thank God for keeping me undetectable. And he wrote that like in huge letters and he made that bold. And I feel like he was almost preparing people for this news getting ready to break in a few weeks. You know, so the whole situation is just really, really crazy. But again, this is why we need to talk to our kids that it doesn't matter if you see somebody on TV. It doesn't matter if you think they have money. You never know people's statuses. This grown 27-year-old man had no business messing with a 16-year-old. I don't care if it was a 16-year-old girl or a 16-year-old boy. Way too old to be messing with a 16-year-old teen. And I don't know if this little boy ended up contracting HIV and that's what made him go to the police. I'm not sure. They're not saying too much about the victim. But it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. You know, the whole situation is just really, really scary. And it just goes to show you that you never really know people. You never really know what they're going through. You never really know what they're involved in. And people have to be smart. We have to continue to talk to our kids and let them know that, you know, HIV is not gone. I don't care if somebody's claiming to be undetectable. HIV HIV is very real and you can still get it and you have to be careful. And if you're going to have sex, you need to protect yourself. Point blank, period. So this whole situation, like I said, is nuts. It's going to be very interesting to see how everything plays out. If you guys want to uh, read his letter, I will post a link down below. You guys can read his entire letter about um, him talking about this situation. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation. Once again, concerning Coach J. John from the infamous Dancer Rats. How did you guys feel when you first heard this news? Are you guys shocked? Do you guys believe him? I feel like somebody's just making this up to assassinate his character? Or do you feel like he's possibly guilty because he came out talking about this? you know kind of in a shady way almost a month before this came out to the press so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment all right deuces hey you guys it's your girl t make sure to subscribe like and share my videos you can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise also don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos talk to y'all later deuces